So I got a copy of Look Both Ways. I actually um, had met Jason Reynolds. He was a, I guess he's like a, a writer in resident at Lesley University, um, where he lives there for at least a week, and he sort of mentors and teaches students there um, in their, uh, I guess, like creative writing program. Um, and anyway, the, the, uh, a lot of people give talks. He's one of them who gave a talk. It was open to the public, so I went. And um, at that talk, I have it on my blog as well, he actually read two of the short stories um, that he was working on for this book before it came out. And so if you wanted to see kind of what um, a draft story of his is like, you can kind of listen to him with two of the stories. And then if you read the book, you can see kind of what changed. It, it actually seemed pretty similar to the book, but I didn't really check it word for word. But um, I would have to say that Jason Reynolds is like, the most, like, he's just sort of the nicest guy, most generous, um, just a really warm, friendly human. Um, he had a guest blog for us for Multicultural Children's Book Day, um, um, and he had, like, missed the email, and so, like, he, he missed the slot. I think it was our first year, and then he had emailed back saying, oh, I just found this email, and it's really late. Um, you know, do you want me to do it? And I was like, sure, because it was sort of a, an interview of him. And then he, so he just kind of whipped it out and I just thought it was like, he was so nice and gracious about it. Um, but anyway, I found that his talk at Leslie College was just this master class on show, don't tell. And, um, and like, I've read a bunch of his books, not all of them, I've read a bunch of them. And like this, I, there's this book, there's a reason why it's getting all kinds of buzz. It, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. And so what he does is he has sort of a, sort of like two overarching themes that um, ties all these short stories together. So each short story is of, you know, different characters, but they are um, all at the same school and they're all kids who walk to school. And so he had originally, I think, was going to title the book like Walkers, but it's sort of a book about what happens in that gray area where kids are going to school, but they're not supervised. That's where trouble can happen, where bullying can happen. Um, and so, so you have all these characters kind of on the way to school or on the way back from school, um, you know, a period of time. Um, and then you also have this theme that he weaves through every story. And I, and I, I, I almost wanted to ask if I ever had a chance to talk to him um, with this motif of a school bus falling from the sky, if that was something that um, organically came into one story and then he wove it through all the others, or was that a conscious decision to plant that into every story. And so along with that theme of a school bus falling from the sky, which is kind of a, you know, an out of the ordinary thing that, you know, doesn't totally happen in real life. He also has as the um, um, sort of a message related to that about, um, you know, what are you doing to change the world to make it better? Um, and so with, with, with those sort of uh, themes that kind of tie the whole book together, every story um, is like really captivating and and really explores um, very subtle I mean like like I don't know how he does it so well but you you get a glimpse into the character and also what it's like for them at home what their home life is and so you understand um, even though it's just a short period of time where they're, you know, sort of coming or going from school, you get you get so much detail about sort of the struggles that they have, um, just just everyday life struggles, um, whether they're being a foster child, whether uh, they lost a sibling um, in a really tragic way recently, or uh, they're being bullied, all all kinds of um, you know eye opening. Um, um, theme, uh, like, uh, family stories he's able to weave in is almost like these details. It's, it, it's not the center of the story because that center story is really about the characters are coming and going, um, and what they're doing. But he, he manages to just, you know, pack in a wallop. Um, and then also just because these kids are all at the same school, um, you start to understand, you know, how they interact or how, um, you know, why they're this way and why they act towards other kids that way. Um, there's, you know, there's, um, domestic violence is, um, one of the stories, 
But anyway, I can't, I can't praise it enough. It's, it just, uh, because they're short stories, it reads very quickly. Um, you know, you can read it all in one sitting or you can read it in pieces. Um, you know, you don't have to rem remember, you know, each, you know, remember the whole book, you know, you sort of can read it. Um, but each story kind of grabs you, each story just grabs your attention and you want to finish the, finish the story and you sort of want to move on to the next story. So it also is a very, um, quick read, uh, let's see about a little bit under 200 pages, but I don't know. It's just, it's, um, uh, middle grade. It's extremely powerful, really engaging. I think kids um, nine and older would really like it, but but even an older audience of um, teenagers would get a lot out of it. Um, fans of Jason Reynolds, for sure. You know, since he writes YA and middle grade, even YA authors would. But even as a uh, anyone who's writing, if you just wanted to read like, oh, how do you write show, don't tell, like, you know, read one, literally read one short story and it'll just be like, wow, that's how you do it. But anyway, um, I think this is up for Newberry Buzz and um, maybe National Book Award, but it's, it's well-deserved. I mean, he is a fantastic um, author and just also such a nice person. So um, I got this copy, someone, a uh, publisher sent it to me and I can't um, praise it enough. Anyway, thank you so much for watching.